the committees, which will take place in 2022, is 868 billion, 14 million shillings. This, however, does not include operational costs of wage bills, general finance and administration, capital development, or the acquisition of uh, the, uh, the new building that we might acquire or we are required to move to over the four years. Right Honourable Prime Minister, please know that since the conclusion of 2015-2016 general elections, the number of administrative unit, units and voting population have increased. Uh, just to give, to give you, Right Honourable Prime Minister, an example, in 2015-2016, we had 112 districts. We expect 141 districts by the time we hold elections. We had 39 municipalities. We will have 80 municipalities. Sub-counties were 1,398. We expect to have 2,000. Parishes were 700, uh, rather 7,431. There will be 9,500. Uh, villages were 57,842. We have, we are expecting to have 65,200 poli uh, polling stations. We had 28,010 when we held elections in 2016. We are going to have 35,000 polling stations by the time we hold elections in 2021. Registered voters were at 15,277,198. We expect to have a voting population of 19,400,000. These are the cost drivers. These determine the costs that uh, electoral commission incurs in holding elections. But there are other cost drivers and these include continuous improvement in the electoral process, uh, comprehensive vote education, which we need together with stakeholders and their sensitization. Um, there were recommendations that came from the Supreme Court judgment, and those imposed some costs, and we are going to include them. But there are also price changes and exchange rates, which fluctuate. Um, over a period of time. The strategic plan has detailed roadmap for 2020-2021 general elections. I urge all stakeholders to keep keenly follow the major events and the time frames within which each milestone activity must be accomplished and play your roles accordingly. However, for the experience, from the experience the main challenge in, in implementing previous plan was under funding of the recurrent budget. Whereas the government has continued to create new administrative units and local governments, provision for the recurrent budget has not grown proportionately. However, I wish at this time to appreciate and thank the government of the Republic of Uganda for the support it has shown in funding previous general elections and by-elections and other operational costs, including enhancement of staff remunerations. We thank you, Right Honourable Prime Minister. I'm therefore confident that the government will be able to support the Commission with funds to address the challenges as indicated in the detailed plan. I wish to assure you, uh, Right Honourable Prime Minister, that the Commission is committed to implementing this plan and roadmap. Uh, EC alone cannot realize these desired goals and results without the full support and participation of every stakeholder. I therefore appeal to all the stakeholders to work 
towards uh, achieving unity and cohesion for the democratic development of Uganda above the individual aspirations. Uh, I want to thank Electoral Commission for this wonderful day, the presentation of the, of the strategic plan and the roadmap. And it just, I'm sure, sends shivers down the spines of many politicians because it's like a wake-up call. Uh, of course, uh, because of the Supreme Court uh, recommendations, and as a member who sits on the Legal and Parliamentary Committee, we knew that uh, we had complied and the elections were going to be brought forward. So when you think of the fact that January 2021 you will be participating in the elections and nominations will be August 2020, then working backwards it really means between January and July, that's when we have primaries for those of us who have parties that we belong to. So really 2020 and 21 are election years for us. That's a long time, eh? It's quite something. But I know that the Electoral Commission has shown us that they begin 2019, or that they're already working. Mine was to propose that uh, voter education be done in 2019 and be continuous. And that also we have it done together with civic education by the Uganda Human Rights Commission. I, I Honorable Medical Kawa was seated here, but now I think he's gone. And also, um, side by side with other stakeholders like the police, like the Ministry of Justice. I mean, all people who have um, a role to play in elections. Because there are, say, election offenses, for example, that come up. And uh, these may be, the people may understand better when they see a policeman standing there and telling them about those roles. And it would make it easier for electoral commission. I know that uh, you commissioned various people to do voter education for you, but I want to report to you that some of them didn't do a good job. When I was campaigning, I had to actually educate the voters on my own and tell them what to expect. And I just thank God that I knew what it was because I'm a lawyer by profession. My second concern is on the EC home. A lot happens when you shift the data, the equipment, and all that, you know, it's disorganizing. Now, if you haven't yet got a home by now, and you've already told us the activities are starting in 2019, honestly, how are we going to expect you to manage? And yet we want a one-stop electro home where we even have the, the stores within the electro commission offices. Because I know they are a distance away, and, you know, we would want all the activities centered in one place. So I'm just calling upon government to fund the process of you getting the new home, because I know in the budget we didn't cater for it. Um, but we are not the final uh, players. Thank you. Thank you very much.